My name is Rick Howie, and I'm a registered professional biologist uh, working in Kamloops, BC. <clears throat> I've uh, been interested in natural history since I've been a young lad growing up in Vancouver, and I used to spend time with my dad out in the marshes of the Fraser River hunting and uh, duck hunting and eventually uh, fishing on various rivers in the lower mainland. And as a teenager, I spent time with friends hiking and wandering around the uh, uh, various trails in the coastal areas of, of BC. <clears throat> Subsequent to that, uh, I went to university and obtained a degree in um, agriculture and wildlife management. And then I uh, worked for Parks Canada for seven years back in the Maritimes and Ontario, followed by a move back to British Columbia, where I worked for BC Parks for you know, 10 years, and then from the, for the Fish and Wildlife, uh, sorry, BC Parks for 16 years, and then with um, the Fish and Wildlife Branch for 10 years. And I've been consulting for the last uh, 18 years with my own private consulting company. Well, I'm a, I'm a hobby photographer, first, first of all, um, although I do use photography in my business. Um, and my philosophy around photography is on a couple of levels. One is a documentary of various uh, natural history features and uh, subjects, as well as uh, an interest in artistic rendering of, of those same subjects. So it really depends uh, a lot on what my purpose is when I'm out for what kind of equipment and how I might approach things. I, I might add that I'm not a competitive photographer in the sense that uh, I enter contests and seek to have uh, approval of my photos by committees or uh, public groups or anything like that. I think photography uh, on, on the artistic end of things is a very personal thing and I'm not really uh, all that supportive of being judged or judging other people's feelings for what the quality of their images are, although I may often have opinions about that. So I, I use a, a DSLR, a digital DSLR uh, equipment, and I haven't merged to uh, mirrorless cameras except for one that I, that I do have but I have an investment in a 35 millimeter non-mirrorless uh, uh, equipment. So I haven't made the big switch over. And I shoot Canon gear, mainly because when I got into the business, I was given an opportunity to have access to longer and bigger lenses than I had in my stable. So when it came to that, Canon was the gear that my friend used. So I decided to buy Canon gear as opposed to Nikon. <clears throat> I don't have a preference for either. Nikon makes some very fine products and so do other companies. So it's just happenstance that it worked out in Canon for me. And uh, I have two different uh, bodies that I tend to use. One of which is on this side. Uh, lens here, which, which is a, uh, a Canon 6D Mark II, and that's a full frame uh, camera. And uh, the other camera that I, uh, it's an older one that I use, but I use it quite a lot. And I'll come back to, to this later. It is a, a Canon uh, 7D, which is a, a crop camera with a 1.6 uh, sensor. So as far as lenses are concerned, uh, when I first started out uh, trying to take bird photographs or distant uh, distant wildlife, of course it helps to have a, a good size lens. And you can see beside me, <clears throat> pardon me, a 600 millimeter lens with a um, an older Canon camera hanging off the back end, and uh, and this uh, lens was loaned to me by a friend, and uh, I, I still have it. And 
they are very large and, and there's an older 600, so they're quite heavy, but uh, it's a very sharp lens and it looks, takes some great pictures, but they're not very conducive to wandering around and, and random shooting of various subjects. That's nice if you're set up in a blind or somewhere and you can wait for wildlife to come to you. Uh, otherwise, uh, it weighs probably uh, 13 pounds and it certainly isn't uh, very conducive to just packing around. And, and you can't really handhold this lens. Newer versions of it uh, are much lighter, but uh, still pretty challenging to handhold. So for that reason, I use it on a tripod. And you can see there uh, in the image, I have it on a very robust uh, ball head made by really right stuff. And on a Gitzo carbon fiber tripod, which is very solid. So it makes for an excellent combination. There's another approach, uh, which I'll have to reach over to get, uh, that I sometimes use. And occasionally I'll put that lens on, on this uh, device here, which is a, a gimbal style head. And, and that allows you to swivel the camera in a variety of ways. You can swivel the, uh, swivel the lens up and down. And of course you can spin it this way as well. So on a big lens, it can make it easier to follow birds and other wildlife because you have these multiple directions and it keeps it stable in, in both directions. And the one thing about the ball head is that when you release this particular uh, uh, clamp right here, the lens can flop um, in a number of different directions. So you have to make sure that you're hanging on to it carefully so that it doesn't flop over to the side and, and possibly uh, have something catastrophic happen. So the ball head is maybe a little more flexible in a number of directions, but it, it, like everything else it has there, it has limitations and idiosyncrasies. Since that time, uh, I've decided that uh, when I would invest in a lens, uh, Canon came out with a new zoom lens, which goes from 100 to 400 millimeters, and it's very sharp and has image stabilization, which the big 600 lens does not have. So with the uh, Canon 6D Mark II, which has image stabilization in it, as well as the image stabilization in, in this zoom lens, I get quite a lot of stability. And when I zoom from 100, there it is at 100. And there it is, it zooms out to 400. So when I use that on a full frame camera, it takes very short pictures and I can crop in and get some excellent images. If I put it on my crop camera, I get an extra 1.6 uh, magnification. And I even have a, a, a sensor uh, or addition that I can put on uh, an extender, which gives me a 1.4 more uh, magnification. So I can I move out quite far and get lens equivalencies upwards of 1400 millimeters. So this uh, works very well for distant wildlife. But the nice thing about this 100 to 400 lens is has a very close focus distance. And uh, I can focus down to about uh, three feet. So that's uh, pretty handy for even doing insects and, and other uh, uh, subjects that close. The larger lens, of course, is a much farther distance uh, focus. So uh, those are the key lenses that I use for, uh, let's say, uh, uh, wildlife photography at a distance, birds, mammals, uh, birds in flight, especially with the Zoom uh, 100 to 400. It's very easy to handhold and, and do birds in flight. Uh, in fact, most of the time I'm handholding it to get some of my uh, images that you just can't focus fast enough uh, with, with a tripod. 
So I've also uh, moved it into some uh, macro photography. And what I use for that is a 100 millimeter uh, macro lens. And you can see it there. Uh, it's uh, very good for close photography. And quite often I use it on my crop camera so that uh, I get an extra 1.6. Uh, magnification factor. So that can help me get a, a little bit closer. The uh, images are still very good on the 7D, even though it's an older camera. Now, when it comes to uh, landscape photography, I do uh, some of that. And we'll look at some images a bit later. Uh, one of the lenses that I like to use for that is my 16 to 35 uh, zoom lens. And uh, it, uh, it provides a good wide angle. And uh, depending on whether I use it on the full frame or the crop camera, uh, it can change the uh, magnification that I get from that. I had a slightly wider angle lens that uh, decided to take a jump off my tripod and land on the ground and then end up in pieces. <laughs> so they, they don't uh, do well falling, falling to the ground. The last bit of equipment that I'm just starting to learn to use is uh, some flash photography. And I, I don't have many images of, of that yet, but uh, I have a couple of uh, uh, Canon flashes, uh, fairly powerful, uh, uh, 580. Uh, EX flashes, and uh, they have, uh, they can be uh, focused uh, and uh, shown at, uh, they move at different uh, angles. I can ha have it like that, or flash out straight up or, or straight out, and they mount on the hot shoe of the camera, or of course you can put them on any kind of a separate uh, flash arms if I want to use two of them at the same time. So I'm just getting used to that uh, part of the game. And uh, I don't have many images to show there, but I took some the other night and uh, it turned out quite well. So that's uh, pretty much it for most of the equipment that I use. Uh, I have an, uh, one other camera that uh, I'll just search for here. Yes, this is a, a Lumix mirrorless camera. Can't really see much of the details in the dark here, but it's a fixed lens, which zooms from 25 to 400 millimeter. And uh, it's a nice light camera. I use it for a lot of my documentary work. And uh, I like how the sensor deals with certain subjects. Uh, and, and I find out that by experimenting so I like to do old buildings and that sort of thing. And sometimes it seems to do a, a more, uh, more interesting job than some of my other cameras. So I might use that for that. And, and it has a, uh, 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 it has a uh, flip out mirror uh, image so I can look at it and, and rotate it around uh, for various angles. Uh, in order to make it uh, easier to use when you're at a, a awkward angle with your subject. So uh, quite a nice little camera. And uh, that's in the arsenal of uh, products, to, products to be used as, as required as we experiment around with this fun game.